In this video, we're going to talk about Mixcraft's marker list. Now, this is a feature that is in any version of Mixcraft newer than Mixcraft 8. Mixcraft has always had markers, but now they can be viewed in a really cool window over on the right side here. And I'm going to open that up right now by clicking View and selecting Marker List. And there it is. You can also open up the marker list by right clicking anywhere in the timeline up here and selecting Show Marker List. Before I dive into how to use the marker list window over here, let's talk about things you might use markers for. At the most basic level, markers are really convenient for sort of road mapping your project. You can see up here I've got chorus and verse and synth solo and so forth. And these make it really easy to just jump around in a song if you're just moving the playhead around. Let's say I want to hear the synth solo, I can just jump over there, hit play, and there we go. This is a lot easier a lot of the time than just trying to figure out where stuff is, because sometimes it can be hard to tell uh, where particular parts of a project are. But there are a whole bunch of ways you can use markers other than just roadmaps in your song. So let's take a closer look at the marker list over here and we'll talk about what you can do with them. I want to start by just explaining how to create a marker. If you notice on my song it's a start and chorus and verse 2, but I don't have a marker for the first verse. So if I go over here with the playhead, you'll see it's snapping to bars here, and that's because Snap to Grid is on. And my verse starts about right there. So with the playhead right here at the beginning of my verse, I can hit plus marker up here, and it's going to open up a new window for a marker. So I'm going to give that a title. I'm going to call that verse 1. And over here where it says offset, that's the location, which is 5-1. And you can change these if you want by typing in numbers or by pressing the little arrows. You can see this is moving as I press the up and down arrows. And since my verse isn't right on the beat, I'm going to move it right over there. This way I'm moving it a little closer where the actual beginning of the verse is. And here you can, as you guess, select color. I'm going to make this green. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now you can see over here I have verse 1. And what's neat is that you can actually edit things from the marker list window. You can change the name over here if you like by clicking on it and typing whatever you want. But I'm going to keep that verse 1, of course. And let's just go over what all the functions do in each one of these. Over here are play buttons that initiate playback from the marker location. You can stop playback by hitting the stop button or space bar. And if I click any of these other ones, as you might have guessed, they will play from that location. So here's my chorus. Here's my verse. Turn that down a little. Another verse, synth solo. And so on. Over here are the colors, and you can change the colors by just clicking on that and selecting a new color. I've got a little system where I use green for my verses and red for my choruses and that kind of thing. So I'm going to make that red again and that guy green again. And this little flag over here opens up the edit window that was open before when you create it. And most of the functionality is replicated between these. Uh, if you're a longtime Mixcraft user, you've probably seen this window before. This has been here a long time. There are a few extra functions you can do in the edit marker window that you can't do in the list. And mainly those are the create track for CDs or audio files and this ISRC. And this is used if you're creating an entire CD and you want to assign track numbers to show up in a Redbook CD. Here you can see the tempo and key and signature and you can check these and you can see it shows up over here too. So I'm not going to demo how to do it here because I want to show you how to do it in the list which is kind of faster and easier. This first marker over here is called start and it's right here at the beginning. And this is automatically created. You don't have to make that one yourself. And you can also see that the tempo and the key signature and the time signature are automatically in there. And those correspond to the tempo, time, and key signature right here in the main transport because obviously every project has to have those. Another thing you'll notice with this start one is that it doesn't have an X by it. The X would normally delete it, but this one can't be deleted. You can, however, rename it, so if I want to be really OCD and make it all lowercase, I can uh, rename that with a lowercase s or whatever you like. So the idea is these are the tempo and key signature and time signature that you start with. And if you want to change it, say at the first verse I wanted it to be 130 beats a minute, I could type that in, and now it changes to 130 beats per minute. Same thing with the key, you could change that. And same thing with the time signature. So I'm going to put this back to 120, and these still show up as being the same because I selected them. If you want to get rid of them all together, you can click on the flag 
you can just uncheck these and you'll see they disappear. As I just mentioned, if you want to get rid of a marker, you can press the X over here and that'll delete it. I'm going to undelete that because I want that there. And that's really all there is to the marker window. If you want to hide the marker window, you can hit the X up here and it doesn't hurt anything. It just hides it. And if you want to get it back again, as we talked about before, you can hit view and marker list, or you can right click anywhere up here and hit show marker list. Before I go, I want to show off a really fun thing you can do with the marker list play buttons. Now, if you remember from earlier in the video, I mentioned that you can use these play buttons to instantaneously play back from any of the locators. Well, expanding on that idea, you can use Mixcraft's MIDI controller assign function to assign keys from a keyboard or other controller to these play buttons. If you click on the MIDI button here, everything turns purple, and these are all things that you can assign buttons to. So I'm going to click over here. And then I'm going to press this key right here, assign this C3, click on that one, D, E, and so forth. Also, if you look up top at the timeline ruler, you can see that the assigned MIDI keys are actually shown on the marker flags when you're in MIDI assign mode. So when I'm done assigning, I'll click on the MIDI learn button again. And now all of these buttons are assigned to keys on my keyboard. So if I play C, my song starts, D, E, you can really go nuts with this. Okay, so you probably won't experience a spontaneous explosion, but nonetheless, assigning a keyboard or MIDI button controller to trigger playback from markers is super fun and creative.